Well, once again, my man, it's it's an awesome to have you here. You're someone whose music I've been listening to for 10 years, and it's really cool to be able to sit across from someone and dive a little deeper and maybe <laughs> hear some songs, but just kind of hear your story here, what, what right. you came from, what inspired you to put all of these things to chords and sounds and um so it's awesome to have you here brother thank you so much for having me I, I really enjoy what you do as well yeah thank you um so tell us a little bit about yourselves i mean probably a lot of people like me have listened to your music and heard it appreciated it enjoy it but maybe they don't know much about you, you know? yeah it's kind of interesting i never really got too deep in to the personal side and and because i was always wanting it to be about the music and mm -hmm. Um, I which is probably the most personal part of you actually <laughs> ever. Exactly. So this is just like yeah. the light work. Yeah. You've already done the heavy so, work. So it's 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 definitely, and also what I do is 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 very personal. But people, you know, songs can be, you know, one thing about a great song is that it can mean so many things to to different people, and and that's so important. You know, a lot of times people come up and say, "Hey, what's this song about?" And 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 it's really about what they as a listener think it's about and and it can mean so many different things i've heard so many different interpretations but you know i don't set out to write a song about this or that it is more of a something that flows through naturally and just it, it just the muse i just follow the muse and that's like all you just described all good art <laughs> i think any good art right yeah. it's it's open to how it makes somebody feel it's not yeah. this voyeuristic showing of, right right oh look at this thing that i created for you to manipulate you to yeah. feel this certain way or right. do this thing right. this is like a window into the soul of a poet to yeah. a certain degree whether that's painting on a wall or or putting down music right you know? right I, I don't think you can i, I mean I, I know that some songwriters will say well this is about you know the situation in olympia where the Zeus was about to, you know, or whatever, you know, have have like something set out or, or kind of set out for a theme or something like that. But I, I the inst, you know, instinctually sitting down with a guitar and kind of letting, letting, letting the magic happen. And I, I, I know, you know, people say, oh, you know, that's, the song just kind of wrote itself, you know. But you know, it's like, <laughs> it's it, there is some uh, truth to that, mm -hmm. and and. Um, I think that, that, you know, one of the main reasons that the personal side hasn't come out or, or whatever, it's just, I, I never really received very much mainstream kind of media or radio. And it's, what's beautiful about it. It's, it's been like a huge amount of word of mouth. And then I played a lot of live shows mm -hmm. and people really liked the records and and delved into the rest of the catalog and somehow you know got a license here or there or something on a tv show or a movie and because the music works well with visuals yeah i i got a lot of licenses in the past so so sometimes you know i met eric clapton and he had me do the crossroads festival and and i said how did you hear the music and he said um he was he, he was watching the movie ghost town Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the songs came on, and he really liked it, and and looked into it. And um, I still haven't seen Ghost Towns, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, don't think I, have I feel very bad about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and confessions, mm -hmm. confessions with Cole. But I heard it was good. Yeah. So when you're talking about that creative process, right? About the music kind of coming through you, yeah. and getting out of the way. I feel like when I do anything that's really good whether that's me speaking on stage or me in a podcast yeah. or me creating something i'm less and even writing poetry or something like that it is it is kind of a funny thing because all right it is your stuff but you really can't fully take credit you for can't it. claim it you can't really <laughs> claim it right because it's yeah. just kind of it just moves through you become a conduit yeah for some some other energy source and you could take that as spiritual as you want you yeah. know and i think that greeks did a pretty good job calling it the muse right they right. Just, just said like hey something is here they maybe anthropomorphized it and made it into a woman and yeah. made it into like <laughs> whatever they wanted to make but it's it's a force it's a yeah. force of life that kind of moves through and makes art i, I completely agree i, I 
I remember Keith Richards sometimes said it, you know, it was just about keeping the antenna up and that there's all these songs in the atmosphere. And if your antenna is up there, you might catch it, mm -hmm. you know, and I thought that was kind of an interesting way to, 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 to explain it. But I, I think just, just doing something and having solitude has always been an important thing in songwriting and probably anything good I've done in life has, has had, had something to do with a, a certain amount of solitude. Wait, so you can't keep your antenna up when you're watching TV and scrolling Instagram <laughs> and like fucking around, really? Well, yeah. Really? That, weird. <laughs> weird. That's, that, that's not how you put the antenna up to the cosmos to yeah. receive art? Strange. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that it's just, um, it's one of those things. Yeah, with all the distractions now, it, 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 it it's kind of wild, but if you can, even on a personal level, I think it's hard for people to understand how important that is in the process of doing anything, anything well. Mm -hmm. And um, and you know, some people can get to it quicker and don't need to go away and and disappear for a couple of weeks or something. But then there's, you know, other people like me. Sometimes I'll just go and take a go to Jamaica or something, run on the beach and spend the day kind of writing songs and then take a run and yeah. then have some coffee. Mm -hmm. You know, when I used to smoke, I'd smoke a spliff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and uh, then maybe have a whatever lunch or something and then go. Go to work. Yeah, keep playing guitar and, and just letting, I, I never looked at it like, um, a job or anything like that. I never looked at it as like, I have to do this, I have to do that. I just kind of let it come to me. There's a great photographer by the name of Henri Cartier-Bresson who um, was French and he passed away about 10 years ago, but he's probably got some of the most historic black and white photographs. Um, and I watched him on a on an interview one time and he was describing his process and he says, you know, you never want anything. Mm. And I, I just, it was so deep that, that <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it just made sense in the musical sense that, yeah. that, that, I mean, we always want something, which is, which is, which is a hard thing to kind of maneuver. But when he said it, it was like, you know, you're right. You know, you don't want to want something. You don't want to try to press too hard, even though you're in the game and you're, and you're, and you're doing things on a basic and, and it's intense and it's you're putting love and everything into it, but there's there's a moment where you gotta just let something happen. That idea of not wanting something is something where it gets really difficult because it's like we all have preferences. Yeah. You know, the preference would be to have a great song, mm -hmm. you know, and so in a way you do want it, but it, then you have to start asking, all right, well, what what is the part of me that wants it? Is it the part of me that my ego that wants something that's going to impress people is it the part of me that wants to be you know acclaimed for what i do right. like what part of, what is the part of me that's wanting and then with that wanting is there fear of not getting what i want which the fear then becomes the interference on the antenna right yeah. like fear yeah. is like <laughs> causing the static yeah. you know as you're trying to download it and the stronger you want something sometimes if you don't surrender to the outcome that it'll be what it is supposed to be that desire contains with it its fear contains with it its static and then ends up undermining what you actually want right anyways yeah i mean i think what point he was making is you know he talks about being get, catching the perfect moment like there's a picture where this guy jumps over a puddle and 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 he catches this picture perfectly he's in raincoat and it's raining and, and it's one of his famous photographs and there's a picture in sif nose grease uh, photograph that he catches this young girl in a in a white dress running up these these you know steps and it's this it's it's called Sifnos and it's it's this beautiful white white buildings and everything and I think he's he's he sits there for hours and hours but and he kind of captures waits for that that Tim so he definitely wants to make a great photograph yeah but I think. He's not trying to push it. He's not finding some girl and saying, hey, girl, yeah, run, run up. up this thing just like this, <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to be, okay, do it again, do it again. I, I missed it, you know? 
like yeah. there's there's a time and a place for that yeah and he's, ca he's catching a moment in time so i think in the arts we always we always kind of want something more than we 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 don't have so there's there's always been that carrot that kind of comes and and well i just want this and then you finally get that and then you're not satisfied mm -hmm. and you wonder why you're not satisfied you might be satisfied for you get a you know your first record deal you get your check you take everybody out and then you know you're but at the end of the day i don't think if you're a true artist that's what it was really about. I mm -hmm. think it's about putting something authentic out, and then you have to go on that path. Now you got to make a record, and you, you know, you know. I remember when I was first just pretty much isolated in this efficiency apartment in in D.C. Uh, I lived in a place on uh, in Adams Morgan on a street called Mozart Place in Fuller, and it was this beautiful like old Spanish building. And um, tiles and everything, very cheap at the time because uh, it just was. I think it's probably super expensive now. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, overlooked a school with a playground. I used to wake up and hear the kids playing, and it was just such a beautiful kind of thing. And I got to play, and I spent a lot of time just, you know, developing my craft and and, and writing and and with my guitar and. I remember, you know, praying that to just do something authentic. Yeah. And and not and I know that's an overused mm -hmm. word, but just like just at the time, you know, not praying for riches and fame and all this other stuff. Um, but I, I felt like that was something that was important to to kind of get I mean, you can get all those other things and, and then feel like oh man this is kind of fake mm. for some reason and i think a lot of times that, that people in music and other other avenues of art can can do something to make money or get get acceptance or get awards and this kind of thing and it not really be something that touches people in a long-term life way yeah you know they might oh this is cool i'm having fun with it and then they're not listening to it anymore. There's also the fear that people have that if they do put out something radically authentic, yeah. and then what if people don't like it? What if people don't th like the radically authentic yeah. me? Then, you know, if they take that personally, it can be really hard for somebody. And I think that actually is probably what prevents people in a lot of cases from putting out something deeply authentic. And that can be in anything. That can be right. any expression of, because there's a vulnerability to authenticity, yeah, right? Because yeah. it's it's really you. Yeah. And you have to know that if you're putting out you and people shit on it, that's their story. You know, you put out you. Yeah. There's nothing better or or grander or more important than you putting out you. And most of the time, the truth is, like, when you put out you in whatever way it is, whether you suck at dancing, but you give it hell on the dance floor, you aren't the best at music, but you're giving it everything you got. It yeah. does, doesn't matter what it is. You put out you to a hundred you know like you've done your part yeah <laughs> you know yeah, yeah and a lot of times it doesn't it doesn't relay to, to the people but i think that's the thing when you put something vulnerable out there some way it kind of trickles in mm -hmm. it's like my first record i put out with um a big record company i mean the first i got signed before that and then I put out this record that was a really personal album and and the, the label called me up and was like, you know, Clarence, we gotta let you go. <laughs> and I was like, What what what's what do you mean let me go? You know, I'd heard the term drop before. Yeah. But I got dropped from the label. And, you know, I'd been, you know, before that I used to buy and sell tickets to concert and sporting events. So I was basically outside you know, the arena or, or, you know, the stadium. And sometimes I'd travel and go do NASCAR races, but college sports. But it, at the time before StubHub, where it was like yeah. a thing, but it was just... It Man, was a, if I saw you outside of an arena, I would for sure buy tickets yeah. from you. The people <laughs> I usually see out there, I'm like, nope. Yeah. Is this well, a ticket? I don't know. 
I'm not interested. Well, that's that's really the the whole. I mean, that's like some of some of the people that used to do a lot of the people that used to do that had, you know, drug problems or were were in jail for a long time and then wanted to not do something that would really get them arrested for something bad. You sure. know, you could spend the night in jail, but it's not like you're not, you know, so Yeah, you're not really hurting anybody. Yeah. And and so it was it was something that so there was a lot of characters out there and mm-hmm. I and I had a lot of stories, but it so I was like, man, I'm gonna have to go back to scout for tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and then I just hit the and at the time the the label it was capital, they said I couldn't, I'd written all these songs for the record. I couldn't re-record those records. I had a re-recording restriction, restriction for five years. So I had to write a whole new set of songs and find a whole new label. And, you know, I had some money from the advance left. I got a warehouse on 9th and O Street in Washington, D.C. at the time. where it was like a lot of prostitution and drugs going on at the time. Now it's, you know multi-million dollar stuff but Mm -hmm. um and we had another my friend had a studio down the street where i used to rehearse rehearse and i I just wrote a lot of wrote a lot of songs sang my you know was able to 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 learn to sing loud and instead of being in a kind of a small place Mm -hmm. but just you know developed that and wrote a whole nother record and did the whole thing where i called everybody called every label and you know shut door shut door shut door shut and then finally i got somebody to give me a demo deal and i felt like i had some good songs and the demo deal turned into kind of a i did the the album and then they were like well you know we really like it but we don't know what to do with it and then that turned into like three or four labels offering me a deal. Mm-hmm. So I, it was kind of, it it was it was good. So I, I, I went in and completed the, the album. That's awesome. So it's one of those situations though where you get dropped yeah. and then in hindsight, you can probably look back and be like, man, that was a blessing. Like yeah. that was, I'm really glad that that happened exactly the way it did. It compelled you to write more, it compelled you to learn things, it compelled you to keep going. But at the time when you get dropped, you know, that's probably where a lot of people have just abandoned their dreams. A lot of people like, give up. It's like, point. fuck it. You know, people yeah. don't like me. That's it. It was too painful to have something authentic get rejected. So yeah. they're like, fuck it. You know, and then they go into that retraction state, yep. you know, which is the opposite of that courageous state, which is action in the face of your fear, action in the face of your vulnerability and moving through. And that's kind of like the way the universe seems to test all of us. Yeah. Right. It's like, okay do something oh do something great okay no <laughs> you're like no yep. really universe what the <laughs> fuck man yeah. and then but then in hindsight you realize like okay this was just the resistance that you had to push through to, to hone your craft absolutely that that that's what what happens and then you put a record out and it doesn't do well and then that's that's the next the next level of it people a lot of people i mean it's really hard to get a, a a record company to put actually put your album out and i never knew why because they would spend money on you know there's they'll sign 50 to 100 bands and then only put a couple of them out and i never knew why they would spend all this money um on recording an album but then i found out when i started putting my own you know doing my own stuff it's really about the distributor because the distributor gives you an advance mm-hmm. so they would if if there was no want, need for a Citizen Cope record, the distributor would be, ah, oh, we're not giving you any money for this, and that's how the majors get their money back. Yeah. So they just distribute. If there's heat on a record, and they got a radio record, or they got this or that, or some interest on it, then the distributor says, okay, we'll order twenty five thousand copies, and yeah. then we'll give you this for that. So they get some <laughs> of their money back to market and promote the album. But I was I was always perplexed on why would they spend two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand in some cases five six seven hundred thousand on a record and not put it out. Yeah, it's just like kind of covering their bases, hedging, almost playing a defensive posture, especially with contracts that kind of lock people up and yeah. and do that. And I think it's nice to see that paradigm 
unraveling a little bit you know there's been a lot of fuss from i think the labels about that but ultimately and from some artists too who are used to getting paid for selling cds and things like that but the decentralization only really allows the people themselves to decide not dependent upon what the radio chooses and not dependent on that so anybody who puts out something can find an audience now yeah which is dope well i i think it it really takes it's in the hands of that artist to build their their thing so mm-hmm. it's 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 now you know some there's so much music out so you have to you listen to it okay that's great that sounds better than what's on the radio or that to mm-hmm. me that sounds like a record that could be a hit but that doesn't you know you have to find your audience and i think a lot of a lot of people don't understand you have you really have to find and create your audience you have to if you're living in a city you have to learn how to get 100 people in a room Mm -hmm. and start with 10 20 you know if you can't get 100 people in your own hometown in a room when you play you know it's not going to be automatic but you you spend a little time doing it um that's that's when okay and then you you hit the region. You try to hit hit every every other thing, and then your your people start listening to your stuff. What was it that made you? <clears throat> what was it that made you know that you that you should keep going? Right? Like, was what was the part of you that decided like, no, 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 this is what I'm supposed to do. Like, whatever this resistance is that I'm facing, like I still got to do this. Right? Like, what what was it? I don't know. I think there was a couple things. One of them is when you're writing a song, you you kind of start feeling the goosebumps, mm. feel the tears or whatever. You know, the early on, when I felt like, wow, this is this this something just happened here, and uh, and it's something that came through me. So I knew that there was something there, and and it, it, that my writing. My songwriting, like I'm not a great singer, you know, I'm not a great. It's debatable, but well, yeah, I'm not, but <laughs> technically, I'm not. I mean, I can sing on tune, but yeah. and, and I put my heart into it, but my my range isn't great, and um, but I write good songs, I think, and sometimes it's a little bit, you know, it's 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 not, it it can be confusing sometimes, but I I write, you know, my lyrics. I feel they're good. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a I'm an awful guitar player, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but I use use that to write. And I'm, I I was pre- you know good with the drum machine. I had a drum machine early on mm-hmm. and started kind of doing that. And 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 as a producer, I feel like I make good records. Um. So it it it, it was just I wanted to do it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was yeah. just, it was, it was, it was almost like I was on a path on a, on some kind of mission, and and it wasn't something that that I was, uh, you know, cons- obsessed with as far as just talking about it. It's just something that I did, and mm. it's just an instinct. And and I never thought that I was gonna be making music. I just liked it. I. I, I I didn't want to perform. I had really bad stage fright. I just wanted to come and be, a, you know, a songwriter and and maybe a producer. And then the songs were so personal that, and I didn't have a name, so I didn't know how I would get those songs out to anyone. Mm-hmm. So I was, I, I, I have to do this now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then. You know, people said, "Well, you have to go on stage and play live," and and I was just terrified, <laughs> terrified of it. I mean, they call it stage fright. I mean, it's really like it, it is that deep. Yeah. And uh, so there's, I, yeah, I think there's a couple things you can take from that. One is you enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, I think that's a key part. Like trying to do something that you don't enjoy, you know, it's going to be a real <laughs> uphill battle. But yeah. then listening for those those cues where you either get super energized or you get those goosebumps <laughs> or you get those tickles or you get those tears that come i know in like the best moments that i've had whether it's a it could it be like an instagram live or it could be a a speech or it could be a podcast or something like that when i know that i really got out of the way 
and I just let what was supposed to happen come through me. Yeah. You know, afterwards, while it's happening, you know, sometimes you're just completely almost out of body. You're just there and, and it's coming through. But afterwards, I'll always sit in kind of a quiet, I'll be in like a quiet place. And even if people are coming up like, oh, wow, that was amazing. Uh huh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then I just, I have to get somewhere quiet. And oftentimes I'll cry, yeah. you know, because it was like, I was just touched by grace to a right. certain degree. Like, this wasn't me. And like, yeah. how grateful am I that I was able to be that conduit and able to deliver that message at that level? And those moments are so special. Yeah. And you beautiful. just remember that. And when you remember that, you know, like, oh, I have no, I really have no choice. <laughs> like, I got to keep doing that thing because that's it's what i'm here for yeah you know like people keep people always tell me they probably tell you keep going man and it's like yeah for sure yeah. like i don't know what yeah. the other option yeah, is yeah it's like yeah um, this is not like a, always I'm really keep, choosing this yeah here. yeah it's so true and yeah. that thing you said about after the show sometimes it's you're in this i don't know what what you what you just called it it was a it was like you kind of in a you don't even when people are saying stuff and it, it's it it really is there's there's a lot of energy mm -hmm. within performing and i was watching something on uh on your thing and one of the guys was talking about um the dopamine that happens when when uh when you perform or something like sure. that and and um there's that hit and then and then like a lot of reasons why people go and then they go to the, he was talking about we went to go to the strip club or something yeah. like that and yeah. then, and um keep the dopamine train rolling right right yeah. so i think it, when when i saw that it was it was interesting you know it's good that you spend a little time by yourself and just you know cuz you always need that yeah and, and it's 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 kind of something that it's hard because people come right up to you or if you even <laughs> even if you want to go out and say hello and thank you and and meet everybody and and there's all these different energies that you're that that they're bringing to yeah. you right there and it's all positive and everything but sometimes it gets a little bit chaotic sure and so when you go back and spend a little time by yourself that's by yourself thing. or with those that love you and know you yeah and, and then you the people who you can just let the tears roll down your yeah. eyes you know and it's uh those are the moments that remind you that okay here's what i'm here's what i'm here to do yeah. you know and here's it's not almost less about what i'm here to do here's who i am right you know like here's who i am at the fullest potential which is almost a surrender of who you think you are it's a surrender of your identity a surrender of what you've wanted to be a surrender of the result but an acknowledgement of like oh this is me right. this is an undeniable part of me and here i am and i'll keep showing up because <laughs> that's, that's that's just what there what there is yeah. and uh the clearest sign that you're doing you know that you're doing the right thing because if you're chasing that other stuff you're gonna keep chasing forever you're feeding a hungry ghost you know you're like trying to feed an organism that only has two assholes you know yeah. <laughs> like the food's yeah. not going to go in you're never going to feel the nourishment unless you really just allow yourself to to surrender all of those aspects of of yourself that are craving you know and just accept and it's a it's a funny it's a funny thing because so much of all the talk is about ambition and drive and hustle and yeah, yeah there's all that i mean right. how many fucking hours did you spend just yeah. figuring shit out working on your voice working on your guitar like yeah there's a lot of that too yeah you know and there's a lot of for me like a lot of reading and a lot of listening and a lot of work and meditation and all of these things and you know that can't be discredited right you know but that sets the stage for you to become a clearer vessel for some fucking cool shit to come through yeah i think that that's that's the crazy balance with it because there you have to show up but then it's it's when you look at all the other things that they kind of other people's expectations or sometimes can can get you to think oh well oh you should have had this or you, you should be doing this and then that starts getting in your mind and it's mm. like you know listening to and following your first instinct is really really important and that's sometimes really hard mm -hmm. and so when you're getting into doing something creative uh like you're talking about 
you're getting to a point where you can't really, once you've learned the rules as far as like, it's like table manners or something, mm -hmm. like you can do what you want or like the English language, you can do with, with it what, what you want. Uh, but when you when you're in in the trenches and learning all those things and and so, there's a reason where you're driven to do something and there's a reason why you do that but then you get to that point and it's it's you know like you were saying you can't that that's not that's not it anymore mm -hmm. you have to let something happen and yeah just like when things things have happened in my life that kind of drove me to to do what I had to do. And then there was a point where that that doesn't that fuel doesn't work anymore. The know? dirty fuel source that, yeah. that kind of drive to make it to prove your parents wrong. Maybe yeah. maybe you had someone in your life that was like, you'll never make it as a musician, you know, you need to go in finance or you need yeah. to get a job as a fucking dental assistant right. or whatever, yeah. whatever that pressure is, that safe route, you know, you'll always have those people who you just have to shrug that off. And, and in order to to actually follow, like go for your win, like go for whatever that thing is yeah. that that you're really here to do. Right. And right. then which is the discovery of really who you are, you know, at that at that deepest level. And and there's all kinds of pressures and there's all kinds of things. And then if you get to the place, like let's say somebody, let's say you make something really good and you got a, someone who really loves your shit and they come up to you and be like, this is bullshit. How come you're not signed by this? And how come you're not yeah. blah, blah, blah. And they like they put their expectations upon you and then if you allow that in and then you go yeah that is bullshit and then you start becoming resentful of people and then you start becoming resentful of music and then as soon as you go for to resentment instead of gratitude well you just fucked your music up too yeah. you just fucked your art whatever that art is up because you're in resentment and resentment is again it's static on the antenna yeah i mean what you're saying is so true because when i when i when i first couple records i put out you know i mean still to this day people are like oh man i don't understand why that wasn't a this this wasn't a hit and this what why didn't this and i used to actually try to have to defend it <laughs> and i was yeah. like well you know record company president didn't see the see it that way and you know you it happened so much that it that it did get me kind of resentful toward some of the people in the industry mm -hmm. and and then i realized that that wasn't the time for it and it reached the people it needed to reach and and it's like and then the antenna is clear again. yeah and it's like <laughs> that and when people say that to me now it's just like all right thanks but they still <laughs> yeah. say it to me it's of like course. i can't believe that that on a clarence greenwood <laughs> recording and you know now the clarence greenwood recordings you know is close to platinum but it took 15 years sure. and but it never had radio success i mean there was a station in austin that was the only commercial station that played it um k-rock and that was uh old toby um had, had been watching my stuff for a while and he, he he spun it and got a got a great reaction and i was you know it was kind of really what helped texas kind of blow up for me that's right texas good job yeah <laughs> good job austin that's what i like to hear um well how about you know if you're up for it do you want to yeah. play a song for us and uh play a song too and then uh, we'll a chat a little bit more and song from the new record all right i love that Down by the river, they'll lay you down by the river. They'll shoot you down by the river, leave you to drown by the river. They'll say it's love when it's not. They'll send you to war and you'll return in a pine box. Somehow they'll claim it's your fault 
They killed that little child in the park They'll take you down by the river They'll lay you down by the river They'll shoot you down by the river Leave you to drown by the river They'll say it's a love when it's not They'll send you to war and you'll return in a pine box Somehow they'll claim it's your fault They killed that little child in the park This has got to stop They'll take you down by the river They'll lay you down by the river They'll shoot you down by the river Leave you to drown by the river They'll say it's a love when it's not By the river 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 See, I never wanted to lose your love I just wanted to choose your love Lost in a moment of confusion Now it's all an illusion See, I never want to lose your love I just wanted to choose your love In a moment of confusion Now it's just an illusion New river, new river <laughs> Yeah, brother. That's All fucking right. beautiful, man. Thank you. It's <clears throat> beautiful. I see what you're saying too about like it would spoil it for me to come in here and start asking you like now what did that mean what does the river symbol symbolize who are the ones who are telling you yeah. you know that it's love when it's not yeah. you know like this is for all of us to draw on our own on our own understanding in the own times in our own life where something like that happened and then how that song shifts for me this is my personal experience how it shifts into the projection of them which is how we always start oh what are they doing what right. are they doing yeah oh i don't want to lose your love yeah oh yeah. it's about me I, i'll yeah. actually it's about me yeah the yeah. whole time it's been about me yeah. you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. it's fucking life man yeah. that's yeah. how every fucking thing yeah. starts like you 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. me me yeah, yeah me yeah. I, I just love you actually <laughs> you know like like that's the fucking beautiful truth of that at yeah. least for me you yeah know? exactly and that's uh that's the beautiful thing about music is you can attach your own life to it or any yeah, any you, art like that you know you can you can always look at something else or some circumstance and politics or or people that that hold you hold you down but it it's always about you know the love is more powerful than that you know it's 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 what is more powerful than love yeah I try to find that thing because there really ain't is. that thing <laughs> that is the thing man yeah. you know i mean that's like I think yeah, you know, people 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 say when I say you know they say it's love when it's not. I mean, sometimes you know, love is has different definitions, 
And I think and a lot of them are not love. <laughs> a lot of so them are not love. So it can happen. I thought I've 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 thought so many weird things about love. Yeah. And then you actually realize you start to learn about love. You start to clean that word off from all the barnacles of delusion and all the <sighs> misunderstandings that are surrounding and all the entrapments, all the possession, all of the things that people attach to that and say, I love you. Really, what you're saying is I need you and I need you to validate me and I need you to love me the most so that I can love myself the most. And it's all this shit. Uh, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> maybe love is just, I fucking love you. Yeah. yeah. I love you and I'll always love you and I see you in no record of wrong yeah like like i'm beyond forgiving you because i can't even see you in a way that would require me to forgive you because i just fucking love you yeah <laughs> you know, like then you start That's looking beautiful. at love like damn how many times have i felt that well yeah <laughs> i don't know i cry every time i do usually because yeah. it's so it's so powerful yeah that's beautiful yeah man so how about so you talk about like putting the antenna up and allowing these things to move through but how sometimes the universe and the emotions that happen sometimes just things crack you right like sometimes you just get hit right. whether that's you know in a relationship or whether that's shit man i just got in a car wreck where a guardrail came through and split my face like sometimes things just hit you the unexpected yeah the unexpected and then do you find that the music allows you an opportunity for alchemy where you can take that thing and all of that emotion and all of that energy that may be upon you from something that you didn't necessarily ask something that just happened and then the music allows you to alchemize it into an expression and actually move that energy through you yeah i mean i think that the genesis of it probably happened um you know early on in my life so mm -hmm. it was something that really healed me yeah and um something that that I never learned to to kind of that carried on in my life and continued to even when I was having a certain amount of success I was wow this is or whatever success is what I considered mm -hmm. doing well um, that that I w I would still wake up and think about like why did this happen you know and and it wasn't it wasn't until I I had a, a you know situations with my natural father, so mm -hmm. um, I had to really come to some kind of forgiveness for him, mm -hmm. and you know I'd I'd done a lot of things and we'd been estranged for a long time, um, and he disappeared when I was really young and had uh, had had. Had kind of you know we, we you know he you know like my age or whatever you know definitely physical stuff going on and mm -hmm. and and so it was it it was something that I didn't I hadn't come to terms with and we had been estranged for a long time and I think he had tried to show up at a show one time and and I I kind of stayed away from certain places where I knew he lived mm -hmm. so for a long time and then. I, I just realized that I, I needed to kind of have a sit down with him. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of on his deathbed, not on his deathbed, but he was, he was dying. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we, we talked and it was, it was weird. I, I saw him, I didn't see him as this kind of somebody I feared anymore. I kind of saw him as a kind of a weak and flawed individual. Yeah. And I, that's really hard to see your father that way because you want to see him as this powerful person. And even though you always hear, oh, your father wasn't shit and, and this kind of stuff, and you don't want to, you know, you're going to be like your father and all these kind of things. And it's like you put all this negativity and then you see this human being sitting across from you who's just not, he's none of those things. It's just that he didn't, you know, he he just had his life and, it, and yeah. that's what he chose and it was a good thing because i didn't have that fear anymore but after he passed away i did have some things about wow this is fucking me up right now sure and and i kind of went on a, a period where i couldn't really write that well and it, you know and i was i've written this great song and i couldn't figure out how to record it i recorded it like three or four or five six times and this was it was 
it was so I had to just move away from that song and go <laughs> into all these other things. And uh and so I, I think that that I don't know if that's a question you were asking, but you know, sometimes things that you don't expect will will come up to to nip you in a way you didn't think it would. Sure. And especially when I mean even you know, when you get on a high horse and you think you're doing well and then you start drinking too much. Mm -hmm. And then it's the same thing. It's like there are negative forces out there and you have to, you know, I think, I always think sometimes the higher power says, you know, says just here, you want to try this? Mm -hmm. oh, this is a pretty girl. Always, always temptation. There's a pretty girl here and, you know, and then, and um, these kind of things that, that you know intuitively that, that's not the best idea, but the availability of it is something that I think sometimes to get to the next level, there's some kind of test. I don't and know. All, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there's always a test. There's yeah. always a price you have to pay. And sometimes you may just not be ready. Right. You know, and I think sometimes we beat ourselves up so much for these moments where we have given in to temptation or given in to a delay you know, and just drank the bottle of wine instead yeah. of face what was going on. And maybe that's that's okay. Maybe it's okay that we weren't quite ready yet. Maybe yeah. it's okay that you weren't quite ready immediately to sing that song, yeah. you know, that pertained to some of the feelings you felt about your father. Yeah. You needed to do other things and wait for the right time yeah. for that to happen. And maybe there was a lot of bottles of wine in between then yeah. and there, and maybe that's okay. And yeah. maybe, you know, so it's giving yourself permission, but knowing the key thing I think is the awareness the whole time. Like, don't drink the bottle of wine pretending that you're not drinking the bottle of wine to forget something. Right. Like, no, like, okay, here's medicine. Here's my break. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to take this break because it's a lot right now. And then that way you you always have that thin red line of awareness. Right. Of like, okay, this is why I'm doing this. And that's okay. You know, it's okay that I'm not ready yet. It's okay that I need a little time. I need a little <laughs> space. You know, but if you can keep that awareness it's going to keep you from going off the rails because when you're running from it and when you're just like not paying attention and just grabbing all the Jack Daniels you can and, yeah. and then and you don't know why you're doing it anymore and you forgot why you're doing it and then you don't think you're giving then you're a little out of control and then it's a different thing you know so I think it's about as long as you keep the awareness there's a lot more flexibility to what we can do and and, and the patience and the pacing yeah what was it for you that allowed you to actually start to transcend that and actually be able to lay that track down and be able to get to the place where you were ready like did you have to do work around forgiveness of your father or what was the what was the thing that you think i think was holding i you back? i think i've forgiven him i just i don't and i definitely forgave him um and you know we had a I and mean, the conversation we had with was was really good because i actually learned some things about you know was partially raised my, my by my great aunt and great uncle who raised him and just kind of seeing what his his life was like and then having empathy for that like it wouldn't have been easy to live his life you know sure. it was a small town in texas he was a little bit awkward he didn't play football he was you know probably a little bit more intelligent his own parents essentially gave him to um, you know, my great aunt and uncle, because they couldn't, um, they didn't really want to, the responsibility. Sure. And, and, you know, he told me this story because, um, my, my aunt was, uh, my mother one time said, you know, your beloved aunt was a, was a, was addicted to opium or opiates. And, you know, after she had passed away. I just loved her, and I asked my father about it. And you know, he told me this story about when she was a when she was really young that that she had her appendix taken out on the kitchen table with a butcher knife, and like you know, and I didn't ever know that story, wow. and I knew she couldn't have children, but I didn't know, and so they kind of took him in and spoiled him, and and all these other things where he. You know, it, it, I think I think looking at his own story with his mother and his father, that that it was kind of difficult on him, and then and then they felt this guilt that 
because he was kind of thrown away that even though it was to two loving great people that you know my aunt would you know just took care of him and and throughout his life and, almost overcompensating for yeah the, and, for and the difficulty and, and kind of spoiled him and and not i don't know if the word spoils is every you know every time he was in a, in a, in a trouble she would get him out of trouble and sure. and this kind of thing and i think that you know in my own family circle that was always frowned upon and it was it was like you you can't be like that so <laughs> and i always felt i'd never wanted to I never wanted to hear, you know. So, you know, I would always hear if the child support wasn't coming. So it's I never wanted to be that guy. But sure. it, listening to what his story was, it was kind of okay. I get it, you know. And well, you see, it's it's like multiple layers of perspective. You get to see him as a man. Like yeah. you get to remove that label of dad, father, which has so much shit attached to it. So many shoulds, yeah. so many expectations. Well, dad should do this. Is should this is just a person it's probably doing probably doing their best however they can and maybe that's not such a objectively good job but nonetheless like it's a person trying under difficult circumstances and you see that perspective and you remove all of this stuff around dad and father and all this and then you get to see the man and go like oh it's just a man and you're so it's right just a man all along you're so right too but and also seeing him as a man when yeah. you're a man yeah. and not when you're a child it's a whole different thing. It's and and I think there was a level of of all right, this is cool. You know, mm. this is better. It's all good. I understand it. You know, I'm not in fear anymore. Not in fear and also you get to move to a place where all right, well, that was that was hard some of the things that I went through with you, yeah. but that reaction, that adaptation that I had might have helped deep in the well of my soul and the well of my soul is where some of that music comes from where exactly. some of that magic comes from so actually i'm grateful you know and i always tell remind people like be grateful for the thing that happened first before you get grateful for the person who did it right because you can always be grateful for the i'm grateful that i had hard times because that yeah. hard times is the thing that dug that mine that touches <laughs> down you know to the deep parts yeah and that would wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the hard times. Then, when you're grateful for the thing that happened, then you can be grateful for the person that caused that thing. Yep. And then, when you're grateful for the person that caused that thing, then you can forgive them, and yeah. then you can move past that in a really peaceful way. Yeah, I mean, I I I feel like I've I've had a really some really great things in my life that have happened. I mean, amazing, and I I, I feel so blessed. And I don't think those things would have reached the height of, of like enjoyment had I not had, you know, the difficulties in life. And you have to go through difficulties. Like it's just something that happens. Like, and it's all mm -hmm. relative. I mean, it's not like it was, you know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world that happened to me. Like it's people that really, 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 really suffer. Sure. But there's, there's, I think it's something that, that you look at in your own perspective. It's like, you always try to find out maybe what's what's the thing that's holding me back here. What's the block? What's you know why am I drinking that bottle of wine? Mm -hmm. Why am I you know smoking all day? Mm -hmm. You know, and and then I'm still capable of going to every show and doing this stuff, and I'm pretty much function. I'm definitely functioning and putting on great things, and and but then you look at it, and and you know I was. I, watching your stuff about the ayahuasca stuff mm -hmm. and i I always wanted to try it but i i i'm scared of the loose i like i'm scared of like what is going to come out with that mm. um but it, it seems like that's been a pretty oh it's been huge for me experience. i mean i had i had a very visceral moment that was very similar to what you described you know because my dad was very like verbally aggressive and a yeah. little bit physical but not much yeah. you know but like would corner me and like throw me down and really yell at me for a long extended periods of time like and i was a little kid you know yeah. I was four five six you know young yeah and so there was a lot of fear there you know and 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 i think there was a moment when i was 
it's pretty soon after i had my kind of vision quest i went back to the same shaman and we did a dmt based snuff so it was actually snuffed this dmt and i went right back to the most traumatic event that i had with my father where he had thrown me down in a hotel room and was yelling at me and i just kept saying like i love you dad i love you dad like what are you doing like i love you wow <clears throat> and i was reliving that moment but what ended up coming up which was actually really healthy it was then me as who i was at that point and i was 22 and at 22 i was lifting a lot of weights and training a lot of martial arts and i was way <laughs> bigger and stronger than my dad was and i was a young man but still a man at that point and i was able to sit there and not be afraid and express some of the anger that i'd that i'd held it in the visionary space right i'm in wow. the middle of the, i'm in the middle of the desert but i'm in this moment where i see my dad doing that and i go you can't do that to me now yeah you can't do that to me now try to do that to me now and i was seeing myself as who i was i was like oh no i'm a man now yeah like i'm not the scared little boy anymore yeah yeah and there was this really empowering moment where i got to shed these layers of fear of being the little boy that was cornered and couldn't do anything to this helpless kind of powerful father and i had a lot of love with my father too it wasn't all bad it was yeah. you know tons of love there yeah. and tons of guidance and whatever but there was some them, some hard moments and for me one of the gifts of the medicine was being able to take me to that spot and as you said you know come as it come to it as a man again and just rewrite it so all of that fear about him doing that like all of that was rewritten because i got to relive it and i wouldn't have been able to do that without that tool those that medicine that kind of came through and gave me that opportunity so that's just one of countless dozen stories of how the plants and you know because this was a plant-based dmt snuff how all the plants have kind of guided me to different lessons and different ability to shed some of these layers of trauma and challenge that i've experienced so wait you actually saw this happen oh man so i'm sitting in a yurt in the middle of the new mexico desert yeah with the shaman snuff this thing and i'm right there in vision and like f seeing and feeling i mean it wasn't like open like i still see the see around me it wasn't like my whole world got taken over right, you know like right. i'm in vr or some shit but as soon as i closed my eyes i could see it and feel it and hear it and i was both simultaneously that little boy and then i emerged as the man that i was while my father was still there and this is all in the vision space you know closed-eyed vision space right and so i got to just rewrite it was almost like rewriting that memory a memory that i didn't like to access a memory yeah. that i was like kind of keeping away hidden something that was like a fear and, a, and something that was under the surface and it just drove me right into it and i got to rewrite that old story you know put it in with different emotions put it in with my own courage my own recognition of who i was and who right. i had become and that was amazingly powerful and who knows how long that would have taken you know maybe for me it would have had to have been another you know moment like that where i got to see i don't know maybe i'm sure it would have happened at some point right you know but that gave that to me early at 22 rather than now at 37 you know where i got to get that early and get that lesson and that really propelled me forward in a lot of ways did did you had you hallucinated before with other so i started when i was 18 and that was my first vision quest with mushrooms and i okay. definitely had a lot of visions there and hallucinating is kind of a funky word and i don't you tend it's to it's not use it like you see because you don't yeah. see things okay. when, when you open your eyes everything is normal maybe oh. maybe the lights get a little fuzzy and have little trailers if you kind of move your right. head but when you open your eyes pretty much all is normal right but when you close your eyes you will have visions that are like dreams basically that can come through and some different variety of lucidity like some different variety of clarity and vividness and then you get to interact with those especially in the dmt space i mean that's where that's ayahuasca or dmt or the snuff that i took right these dreams these kind of visions closed-eyed visions can become very very visceral and very real was that like when they they do the straw up and yeah so that's one of them sometimes oh, wow. that's hoppe which is tobacco which okay. is really strong and right. sometimes that's um <clears throat> Uh, the other word uh starts with a y but there's another dmt snuff that they can right. use too right. and then there's um uh, vilka which is one that we've experienced down there as well so there's a variety of different ways to get this in the body um but it's interesting man and i think it's worthy of some healthy 
some healthy fear and, and respect for what this could bring up. But tip, you know, really the thing that I realize is that what you're shown is an opportunity to heal. Like there's a wisdom in the plants. Like I, I don't really even like a lot of the synthetic psychedelics because I feel like it's kind of random. Right. It can be super helpful right and super valuable right right but they can also be like super disturbing for no real reason in my personal experience and there's a lot of psychedelic advocates who are like there's no difference i'm like fine like that's your opinion <laughs> but for me like the plants and the dmt molecule itself has a kind of guidance it has like a spirit it has like something else that's guiding you right. exactly where you need to go and you just need to surrender to the lesson that's coming and trust that it is going to be a benefit what about the frog the frog so the toad so there's two <laughs> things there's the toad which is the uh buffalo garris the colorado river toad that has the 5-meo dmt and that's a whole nother fucking thing 5-meo right. dmt to me feels like you're it's attempting to get you to merge with the somatic body of god itself and god itself being everything all right. is of god or nothing is so it's all of the feelings you've ever could possibly feel love sadness joy happiness laughter you know excruciation like everything at the same time it's like if every musical note was played at the same time through your body you know you'd call that god every note every vibration every every bit of energy at the same and you get to merge with it and overwhelmingly it is love it feels right. like love right but it's not the soft it's not the soft cuddly teddy bear version of love it's the oh yeah. <laughs> like yeah. full, full like volume all the way turned <laughs> up love and that's uh it's another really powerful experience that is that the you know, one they available. burn you in or that's also so the one they burn you in the one they burn you in i'm highly skeptical of i almost died doing that oh, that's shit. called cambo they gave me 11 dots on my arm, right. rubbed this frog toxin on my body, and then my face swelled up and my throat closed. And unfortunately, we had like a trained like field veterinarian who was there with his fucking knife who was ready to give me a field tracheotomy <laughs> if I stopped being able to just suck the little bit of air that I could through my throat. And I got no fucking benefit, and I was sick for like two months. So that's Cambo. <laughs> don't recommend it <laughs> don't recommend it however you know the bufo frog the 5-meo dmt frog and that's which a smoke, short one that's a pretty short but it seems like it's longer right well you can enter a space of timelessness right where you lose track of time and you have no idea how long it was uh, at all anyways so there's a lot of interesting things out there man and when we, when you're called to it and uh you know you got my number i mean there's right. there's some options we know okay. i know that game i yeah. know that game pretty well and it's it's been incredibly powerful for me for sure that's amazing yeah yeah well how about we uh how about we wrap this up a little more music man all right cool yeah let's do it what do you want to hear i don't know man whatever's moving through you decide from the place where laughter comes from brother wherever wherever comes out of here we'll hear it man thoughts it leave me there are no words to describe it in French or in English cause diamonds they fade and flowers they bloom I'm telling you these feelings won't go away They've been knocking me sideways They've been knocking me out late Ever you come around me These feelings won't go away They've been knocking me sideways I keep thinking in a moment that time will take them away But these feelings won't go away These feelings won't 
these feelings won't go away You know it ain't easy For these thoughts to leave me There are no words to describe it In French or in English Cause diamonds they fade And flowers they bloom I'm telling you That these feelings won't go away They've been knocking me sideways They've been knocking me out late Whenever you come around me These feelings won't go away They've been knocking me sideways I keep thinking in a moment that Time will take them away But these feelings won't go away These feelings won't go away Man, how many of us have been in those positions where those feelings won't go away and <laughs> get knocked <Yeah>. sideways? <laughs> you know, I think obviously there's a be- that's a beautiful song, the way it sounds, you know. But then the to understand, like, yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> like I've been there. Yeah, yeah, I've been in that spot so many ways, so many times. Time and seal, time seal all wounds. They do, man. Yeah, they do. And it's okay. It's okay to get knocked sideways. Don't pretend that you're not so- knocked sideways. You know that's the only <laughs> that's the only thing that's a problem. Yeah. You know the only time it's a problem when you're like, no, I'm good, bro. I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, girl. Like, no, I'm fine. I'm don't sh- me. You think I care? <laughs> I don't need her anyway. I'm, sh- I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's the only fucking problem. It's not a problem when you're like man i got fucking knocked sideways i'm like crushed right now like this is hard but you have that little smile that creeps in like yeah yeah i got knocked i got hit hard and and, and here i am but that's the point where anybody around you is going to come with a big old hug yeah you know just accept that it's okay we're human we're not going to be all fucking juggernauts and colossus and unable to be knocked this immovable object this thing that's not going to be subject to the whims and mercy of our emotions that thing will pull us and drag us down and lift us up this fucking human being you lose in life <laughs> yeah you do you lose you win yeah and just just accept yeah so that's it that's part of the magic of it man exactly it's part of the magic if we could we could we could incarnate as a fucking stone if we wanted <laughs> you know like is that it is that what we want we want stone life where we just are stuck and we can't do it and nothing will fuck us up all right you know, incarnate <laughs> as a mountain next time whatever yeah. be mountain spirit fine but i'll take human yeah you know i'll take i'll take human and that includes being knocked sideways and not knowing <laughs> if you're ever gonna get back on your feet yeah yeah this is beautiful man thanks yeah. for sharing your heart and your music and uh, not thank only you so now, much but, for having with me man it's 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 i've been watching you for a while so i'm I'm glad that you had me on yeah really man appreciate it a real pleasure real pleasure brother and you got a new album out i got a new record out mm-hmm. it's not out yet it comes out uh march 1st okay well we'll time the release of this so that when people hear it yeah they'll and be able to get the record what's it called it's called heroin and helicopters <laughs> all right <laughs> and I got the name for the record because um, I met Carlos Santana and he had me do a song on one of his records and he uh, he came to me at the Fillmore in San Francisco and said, you know, great show. And he was like, I just got to tell you one thing, watch out for the two H's. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like what the fuck are the two H's? <laughs> and he's like, heroin and helicopters. And... Uh, so I'm 
I, 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 he's like, they just don't work well with musicians. <laughs> <laughs> and uh because uh -huh. i think bill graham and stevie ray vaughn had just sure. had perished in uh in the, in the in the helicopter and so i heeded his advice i was like okay i'm not gonna well i hate needles anyway i don't even like going <laughs> you were to... good on the heroin but helicopters yeah, were yeah. tempting sometimes i was like you know i thought that was like a uh you know some kind of uh thing that you know if you made it if you've been in a helicopter <laughs> yeah, that's it that's <laughs> But I, I, I've been to Hawaii a couple times, and and I was tempted to go on it, and I was like, eh, I'm not doing <laughs> the helicopter. Carlos Santana says it, you know, puts that out and there. The worst thing about it was I was just doing a private event in Jamaica, in Port Antonio, and we flew into Kingston. And they were like, you have rehearsal, and it was a private event, and they were paying good money, and it was like, you have a rehearsal, the only way we're going to be able to get there is helicopter. <laughs> and... I was like, oh man, I pray it's gonna be like that we couldn't fit in a helicopter or something. It was like five hour drive. And and I just wanted to be so I ended up actually going over the you know, over the blue mountain or the, you know, the hills of Jamaica. Yeah. And Jamaica's very hilly. It was a beautiful ride in a helicopter. And so um I attempted fate and I think sometimes that uh it was so nice. I was like, yeah, maybe we'll try this again, but I, I don't think I will. <laughs> Unless I have to get radio back to yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's beautiful, man. Well, I yeah. can't wait to listen to the rest of the record. That'd All right, great. great. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Peace.